When it comes to buying a cooler for your PC, does a cheaper price mean an inferior product? Today we're gonna to be looking at, and it's a mouthful, it is the PC Builder Hydrochill 360 AIO or all-in-one cooler. Now I don't wanna beat around the bush, I wanna jump straight into the design. So nothing about this all-in-one cooler screams overly sophisticated on its design, but the merit behind any cooler is how it performs. Yes, looks are important, but it's more about the performance. But like I said, nothing too sophisticated about the looks of this cooler. It is pretty much plastic everywhere except for the parts where metal is needed. The fans for me at least have a very cool design, especially where the RGB elements are placed. But what was really nice to see on what you would say an entry level AIO was that it used rubber stoppers for protection of your case when you're actually mounting a rad. The header is discreet and it does rotate, but it was a little bit irritating to mount because it makes use of reverse screws. The pipes are good quality and they are braided and for me it has a great length so that you are able to top mount side mount without putting too much force on the pipes in order to actually get it to the CPU mounting. When unboxing you'll actually see that the fans are pre-mounted which could be a good and a bad thing depending on the orientation that you want to mount it. For me it was a good thing because I did a top mount and it was perfect so I could literally just do all the cable management but if you are going to do a side mount it is going to be a undo all the fans experience so could be a good or a bad thing. The radiator is pretty standard as radiators go. It does have nice thin fins, but I don't have the ability or a micrometer to be able to actually check the thinness of the radiator. But when I looked at my other radiators from Cooler Mast, etc., it is pretty slap bang on the same level of thinness for the actual ventilation. The last thing on design that I'll speak about is something that I did immediately think would have an impact on performance is that the copper plate is extremely thin. And you'll see this in the picture that I show you. So we will see how this affects the results. Now let's jump into the specifications. Soccer compatibility wise for Intel, it'll support LGA115, 1200, 2011 and 1700. For AMD soccer compatibility, it is compatible with AM3, AM4, as well as AM5. It does have three fans and it would because it is a 360 mm AIO, but the fans are actually PWM fans, which means that it's gonna have a better quality effect on the actual cooling. The fan operating range is 800 to 1800 RPM, which is slightly below what you would see on more mid to top end coolers. Fan noise level according to the specifications is 31.3 decibels and it seemed about right. Honestly, even when the fans were running at max RPM, it didn't make too much of a noise, you could hardly hear it. The pump is 2500 RPM with a ceramic bearing type. Tubing length and something that might be important for those who are pre-building or planning their builds is 380 millimeters. Now the flow rates is more or less 1300 milliliters per minute or 78 liters. Now when it comes to actually equating what a good flow rate is, 30 liters per minute is questionable, 60 is standard, and 78 kind of puts it just above what is standard. You do want to look at something that is about 80 to 120, but for a mid to entry level type AIO, this is pretty good. The last specification can also be attributed to design, so it's design as well as a spec, and that is the ARGB functionality. This uses a three-pin header, so if you're daisy chaining, which you do need to do unless you're using a hub, you daisy chain them and you put them into your motherboard, so this means that you're able to easily change the ARGB functionality in all your major motherboard manufacturers, being ASUS, Gigabyte, ASRock, MSI, and so on. Now let's jump into the important part, which is performance. Now in order to give this a proper evaluation, I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I used two different setups. Both of these setups had a 7950X 3D. I had two different motherboards in the MSI X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. In the other setup was an ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrera. Both of them used the same RAM in Gil Polaris DDR5, 32 gigs at 5600 MHz. The SSD on the MSI side was the T700 one terabyte and on the ASRock side was a P5 plus one terabyte. The PSU differed and on the first machine we had an MSI MPG 850 watt gold and on the other machine we had a Cooler Master Master Watt 1200. The GPU for the first build was an MSI Supreme Liquid 4090 and on the other was an ASRock Radeon reference card, a 7900 XT. Now the cooler for the Corlett MSI build was the PC Builder Hydrochill 360 AIO 
and for the other setup was a Cooler Master Liquid PL360 Flux. The cases differed in the first setup having an MSI Velox Airflow and the second being an open test bench frame. Now it may seem weird that I'm giving you Cinebench results but it's extremely important to note that if you do not have a good cooler you are actually choking the results. Now I did this in the PC Builder and what I call S2 or the other build now the results were pretty much neck on neck and the PC Builder score hits a 34,968 versus the other build of a 35,543. On single core performance, the PC Builder hits a 1982 versus a 2023. When it comes to Blender Benchmark, it was pretty much neck on neck at 555.65 and 556.52. Geekbench also nothing much in it, 18930 versus 19243. On single core, it was 2975 versus 3015. Again, not much in it. Now where rubber hits the road in the actual temperatures. In dark blue will be the PC Builder Max, in the light blue will be the PC Builder Average, in dark green will be the Secondary Builds Max, and in lighter green will be the Secondary Builds Average. Now in Cinebench, the PC Builder hit a max of 87 versus the Secondary Build of 77. But where it gets interesting is the actual averages, and I have an explanation or a theory around this. But the average was 76 for PC Builder versus a secondary build of 71. ADA CPU and FPU stress had a 68 on PC Builder versus a 61 on the secondary build. The averages for the PC Builder on ADA was 67 versus 60 on the secondary build. Blender a max of 82 on PC Builder versus 72 on the secondary build and an average of 75 for PC Builder versus 63. Geekbench 6 saw PC Builder getting a max of 75 versus the secondary build of 65 and an average of 58 versus a secondary build average of 50. 3D Mark Times by saw PC Builder getting an 81 max versus the 72 of the secondary build and a 58 on average versus the 50 of the secondary build. On Extreme, it got a max of 81 again versus 73 and an average of 60 versus 51. Before we conclude, there's a couple of points that are important to mention. I called these my pre-conclusion points. Now the first one is that the PC Builder cooler did not have an interface software or otherwise. This means that when you are setting it up, you are gonna to have to marry the sockets perfectly to be able to accurately measure the RPMs and so on, making sure that pump goes into pump, the fans are going into the right fan sockets on the actual motherboard. The second and most important part for me at least is ensuring that you set the cooler up in your BIOS. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I wouldn't stress too much, your BIOS does this for you automatically, but I did find a lot of merit in tweaking this myself. The reason that I find merit in doing this myself is because of something called stabilization and offset. Now what this means in layman's terms is, first let's start off with offset. Most BIOSes would put a 0.1 millisecond offset, and what this means is the time to react in degree change. So if you say, okay, at 50 degrees, I want you to change the fan speed to X, it takes 0.1 milliseconds to do that. And generally that's quite fast but I did find that this cooler did have a stabilization issue because we saw that the averages were really good, but it didn't handle spikes too well. And I do think, in my opinion, that this was due to the copper plate being a little bit thin. But when going into the BIOS and actually doing the curves myself, I found that I had better averages and better temp spike management because I was setting the curves a little bit higher. I will give you a picture of the curves that I used, but what I found in doing this was that I created for myself a little bit of a buffer so that if there was a spike, I was already accommodating for it depending on the degree variance that I set. And one other important point is that the fans for me, as mentioned before, were extremely quiet and on par with top coolers that I have reviewed or used before. For me, this cooler did extremely well. Firstly, in the fact that it was utilizing or trying to cool the highest end CPU that you can currently get in AMD, the 7950X3D, and it went head to head with the 360 Flux, which is double the price of this. I honestly found that reviewing this cooler was extremely irritating in that I really wanted to find a fatal flaw, but I just couldn't. The only thing that I can say as a reviewer is my concern on how well it will age. And this is because we can't review something for a year or two years. So generally we have to take it on face value as to how it performs now. So I did ask that of the manufacturer and they assured me that it will operate within its life expectancy. So on that front, I don't think there's anything to worry about. Now this will retail at about 1,899 to 2,000 Rand. And I think that is a solid buy considering what you're getting and the performance for the price. 
I'm actually using it in my personal build now and I've had no issues where I have had issues with top end coolers in the past. I've had it in for about a month and a half now and I can say I've got no complaints so far. So again, it is a high recommend buy from me purely because of the price to the performance that you're getting. Yes, if you do buy higher end coolers, you are going to get lower degrees, but it all depends on your budget. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. Look forward to seeing you in the next review. Cheers and goodbye.